In the previous video, we've illustrated how to approximate derivatives with finite difference approximations. So let's now take this one step further and illustrate how we can use that concept to solve entire differential equations. And in order to keep things very simple so that we can focus on the most essential part, let's, keep a very, let's have a very simple example of a differential equation. Let's have a 1D wave equation, 1D Helmholtz equation, um, with even a constant refractive index. So k here is a constant number. So what I suggest you do is pause the video and then take this continuous domain differential equation into the discrete domain. So construct the finite difference approximation of the derivative and see what you end up with. So very easy if you looked at the previous video. So the approximation of the second order derivative is f of x plus delta x minus 2 f of x plus f of x minus delta x and we divide the whole thing by delta x squared plus k squared f of x equal to zero so this is the finite difference approximation of that uh, differential equation Let's make our life uh, even more easy by saying that delta x is equal to 1. So then I don't need to write that denominator here because I'm a very lazy person. Let's not, let's not do that. And let's also say, okay, let's calculate the following values. Let's say we're interested in the fields at the points uh, x equal to 1 up to and including x equal to 5. So these are the five field values that we need to calculate. However, bear in mind that this is a second order differential equation, so we need some sort of boundary conditions. We need to know what the values at the beginning and at the end are. So let's say that we know that f at a point 1 is equal to a certain value f1 and something similar for the end uh, value here f5. So, for example, you could have some perfectly reflecting metal boundaries that force the field to zero, or you could have a source there that, that imposes a certain value of the field there. But let's have a very simple case where we have boundary conditions that look like, uh, like this. So next step, pause the video and write down five equations to figure out what the field is in each of these uh, grid points. Actually, you already have two of these five equations over here. So write down three more equations for the internal domain looking at this uh, differential equation and then see what happens. Okay, first equation is a piece of cake. We already have that. We have at the point one, we have F1 is equal to F1. And now let's take that equation and evaluate that at the point X equal to two. So then we have f of 1 minus 2 f at 2 plus f 3. This is basically this here where we have x equal to 2. And then plus k squared f 2 equal to 0. Okay. And then we repeat that two more times. f 2 minus 2 f 3 plus f 4 plus k squared f3 and then once more because this is so much fun f3 minus 2 f4 plus f5 plus k squared f4 is equal to 0 and then we have the freebie f5 equal to f5 so what do we have now after our efforts? We have five equations for five unknowns. And that sounds very linear algebra-like, so that's something we can solve um, using standard linear algebra techniques. And indeed, let's write that as a matrix to bring that out more clearly. So if we write that as a huge matrix here, where for this, this column vector, we have the unknowns F1, up to f5 and then for the right hand sides we have them over here so it's mostly zeros apart from at the beginning positions so we have f1 
then three zeros and f5. And if you now look at the equations that we have, now the first equation is just one times f1 and then all the other ones are zero. So that's the first equation. For the second equation, if you look at the coefficients, we have uh, one for f1, for f2, we have k squared minus two. And then we have, again, one here. And then the pattern repeats, one, k squared minus two, one, one, k squared minus two, one. And then for the final equation, we only have a term in F5. So that's another one over there. And all of the other guys are uh, zero. So here we have it. This is our linear problem. We have a matrix A times a vector of unknowns equal to a known right-hand side thing. So now we have something that we can solve using your favorite linear algebra package, and you can indeed get a value of x uh, out of that. Now, bear in mind that even if you solve this thing very exactly, that uh, the end result here, the x that you get out of that, will only be an approximation of the full continuous problem, because you will always make an error by virtue of doing this approximation thing here, by virtue of not calculating the fields everywhere, but having a certain value of delta x. So if you want to decrease that discretization error, you just take smaller steps, smaller grid size, uh, but the price for that, of course, is higher computational cost.